Dean. Next up, we have Tommy Dean. You're exciting to see so many young people. How are you? Good to see you. I want to be relatable, so uh, much like you, I imagine uh, I live in a share house. <laughs> And if you live in a share house, the biggest problem with living in a share house is private space, setting up your borders. Like an example, there's two girls that I live with, and every day, one of them comes into my bedroom at 7 a.m. and says, Daddy. <laughs> take me to school. Personal space! <laughs> sure else. Uh, yeah. So I always feel a little bit out of place in this show. I feel like I came out to say, I am so proud of all of my children. <laughs> They've all grown up exactly as me and my wife thought they would. Sharing on the family tradition. It's very exciting. Uh, it's the far end for me. Uh, even my face knows it. Uh, I grew this beard while I was in COVID lockdown. I've never had a beard before in my life, so I thought I'd give it a little shot, see what would happen. And uh, I was quite shocked to discover that all of my gray hair was in my face. <laughs> like for context, I am 55 years old. Right? And the only thing that I am vain about is my hair, and it's been holding pretty strong. Still hanging in, a little wispy gray, but still pretty solid. I'm starting to think I might be immortal. <laughs> and then my face is like, fuck you. <laughs> what? What's weird is, I don't even understand how it makes sense genetically. Like, how is it that all of the hair on my head is brown, all of the hair in my face is gray, <laughs> my pubes are flaming red? <laughs> makes no sense. When I'm naked, I look like a weird flag. <laughs> Curious times. Curious times, indeed. Uh, I was nice to be back at the factory, uh, driving down here. I love, uh, I love driving in the inner west. The inner west throws up challenges, I think, that America never offered. <laughs> I learned how to drive in America, but you know, every time we got a few more people, we thought, why don't we add a couple of lanes? And you said, no, fuck that. <laughs> No, we built these roads when two guys had a bicycle. <laughs> they worked for them. <laughs> like, it's like nobody in town planning thought, you know, at some point, I bet people are gonna stop their cars <laughs> and go inside. <laughs> they didn't have a name for it at the time. That's why there's no standing signs. <laughs> I think we should call it that. Let's go with standing. It sounds like standing. The car is standing there. It should be walking, <laughs> like cars are meant to do. I love though, it's made a culture of, of the inner west. Like you know now that there is a street that by definition is allowed cars to travel in both directions. But the reality is the direction of travel is determined by the person who pulls into the street first. And as he drives down the street, anybody coming from the other side recognizes that he has set the tone. <laughs> Pulls over and waits a little bit. Then you come out, and just you come out, then it allows that little cultural exchange where I wave, thank you, my direction is done. <laughs> and then they go a little wave, thank you, I'll begin the other direction now. <laughs> It'll give and take, we all learn to understand compromise is part of life. Like yesterday, coming to the show here, uh, I pulled into one of the side lanes and I had very clearly gone far enough down the road that I was the determiner of direction. <laughs> and then suddenly this other guy just comes charging in the other side, right? And not only like not giving way, coming at me at speed and worse, right? He had one of those cars that just had all that look at me, look at me, look at me stuff on it, like sirens. <laughs> What a dick. <laughs> Had his name written on the side of the car? Like something, something, Lance? <laughs> Ambu, that's what it was. 
<laughs> Never even heard that name. Pretty exciting. Uh, I was back in America a couple of weeks ago. I went back to visit. Uh, that was quite exciting. I don't go back very often, uh, so that was exciting. Uh, there's always something that happens in America that like, delights me to know that, you know, I'm, I'm happy to be away from it, but it's sometimes fun to go back. I had a little lovely moment with my brothers. Uh, me and my three brothers all got together, and we went to visit the grave of my grandmother, which I hadn't seen for years. And in some ways, uh, that was a little bit sad, but inside, each of us felt just that weird little elation that the podcasters still hadn't found it. <laughs> so please. It's a fun joke. <laughs> I do like saying it. Uh, but it does make you think that every time you listen to a, you know, an Unsolved Mysteries podcast, there is somebody out there listening going, <laughs> <laughs> I put the knife back in the fucking drawer. <laughs> <laughs> fucking idiots haven't figured it out for 10 years. I'm going to call them. <laughs> Guys, you're fucking idiots. She was loving my grandmother. Uh, a little right wing, a little religious. Uh, she kind of raised us, uh, her big way of raising us. So she said, Tommy, uh, the way you go through life is whenever you face a problem, whenever something is challenging to you, you ask yourself, what would Jesus do? That was how we were taught to live. And as I got a little bit older and studied the word of Christ, I realized there wasn't a lot of clues to work with. <laughs> he didn't do that much. <laughs> On the record. That leads to a lot of questions that I have that I'm not sure what he would have done. <laughs> I got an example, right? A couple of weeks ago, I had to get cash out of the ATM. Rarely use cash anymore, but for a reason, I needed cash. So I put my card into the machine, and I entered my PIN number, but I did it wrong. Oh, that's weird. Okay, it's been a while. Uh, thought, thought, thought. Uh, put the PIN number in a second time. Again, wrong. Now I'm thinking, I'm in trouble. If I go a third time and I get it wrong, it's going to take my car. What would I do? What should I do? And I ask myself, what would Jesus do? And then a warm voice in the back of my head said, use the right number. And I cleared my mind and I thought for a second, I went, of course, 25, 12, cash. Yeah. See, the reason that worked is because about a month earlier, I had just gotten my brand new bank card. And when I had to register my new PIN number, I asked myself, <laughs> what would Jesus do? And I thought that fucker would definitely use his birthday. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of the night. See you around. I'm Tommy Dean. Tommy Dean!